Okay guys, so in this video we are going to talk about tables and how to make a table responsive. So let's get into it. Now let's just walk through the base stylings first and foremost here. So we have a body tag and we have a table, we have some table headers, some table dimensions, and finally we have the markup, which is this stuff down here. Now let's have a look at this table here. This is the output of, of all that styling. So let's just take a look. So on a very wide screen, let's just scroll, get that a little bit higher up there. So here we can see that this table is just, it's a, just a normal table basically, but there is a bit of an issue. So a table, unfortunately, is one of, if not the hardest thing there is to make responsive. Actually, the, you may not know this, but this is actually one of the worst elements in CSS and HTML, like in the web, to try to make responsive. I have so far never seen anyone be able to do this in a very nice fashion, something that feels natural, that has, that's just a nice experience for everybody involved. And I can tell you right now, I can't do it. I have no way of knowing. I, I, I honestly haven't figured out a way to do this. And I would love if, if you know, please contact me. To, please tell me how to do this. But I'll show you the way that I do it. And I think that the way that I do it is the easiest way. And still, it's the, it, the, it's the way that requires the least amount of work and still has v very much the sort of effect that you, or rather the best effect that you can kind of hope for. Because if you set this to mobile, and let's just make that 125 so we can see, this is not responsive and a table cannot really be responsive because there, there is a width, like you have a row here and since a table by, by if you think about it, a table is just a bunch of rows in a, in a column. So you can't really, rem you could remove rows, but then you lose information and you can't really break these things down into a separate line because then the table wouldn't be a table anymore. And that's the core issue here that you, see, you can see now that my entire page is forced to the side by this table. So how do I solve this? Well, I solve it in this manner. So this is my other table that is, in my, per my definition, responsive. If I try to scroll here back and forwards, I'm not being moved on the page. And then you say, you say well, Frederick, hey, where, where, are all the, where are all the other columns? Well, I'm glad you asked. They're over there. So by wrapping the table itself in a separate element and allowing that element to scroll individually, you can actually have, in my opinion, the nicest compromise between something that has never been, that is very un unresponsive, or no, unresponsive basically, yeah, and having a nice user experience. I personally like this effect a lot. I'll show you exactly how it works. So all we do is the same styling. The difference here is that we've wrapped our table in a main tag, and we have set that main tag to be overflow scroll. That's it. That's all we've done. So what happens now is that this main tag is actually just a regular element that you can scroll inside of. And underneath, the table is actually still flowing outwards. It's just that the overflow scroll hides the fact that you have more content back here. So personally, I think this is a very nice effect. So, and it, trust me, I'll can, I, I will tell you this from experience. Just do this. If you can ever do this, this is the least amount of work that you can possibly make in order to make a table responsive. Have a great day.